My name is Rand and I'm part of uh, Locals of um, Collective who works for um, the creative artistic community in Sudan in different ways and forms, ranging from exhibitions to publications. And at the same time, um, I dabble into the arts <laughs> and I create um, works as well. But for today, I am going to be just a person who's fan of a collection of drawings and a book called Prison Notebook by Ibrahim Asarahi. So, um, Prison Notebook is 148 pages book that is done by the modern, um, by the MoMA um, and Sharga Art Foundation. And they basically collected, uh, the, they, printed, they printed it in the same way as uh, and the shape of the actual notebook of Ibrahim al-Salahi, which I'm going to tell you about it in a couple of minutes. Second, actually. Ibrahim al-Salahi is a Sudanese artist um, who was born in Umdurman and was um, one of the first artists to actually go on a scholarship and study at the Slade School of Art in London, along with Shibran um, and uh, a couple of other artists, um, just who happened to go back to Sudan and uh, teach at um, the School of Art uh, in Sudan. And uh, what's interesting is that he later became um, one of the founders of the Khartoum School of Art, um, which I'm not going to delve into for today. It's, it can be for some future fikra uh, curiosities. Yes. So uh, as he was, um, after he founded the Khartoum School of Art and uh, worked as a teacher uh, in the faculty, College of Fine and Applied Arts in Khartoum, he became the head of uh, culture in Sudan, the minister for the whole country. And he had big plans. Uh, as to how to help other artists, how to forge these kind of spaces for, for the arts and culture, um, and how to move forward after um, in a post-colonial kind of uh, history for the country. And um, for his for unfortunate uh, circumstances, his cousin was part of um, an attempted coup that was directed at Nimeri's government in 1975, which led him to get arrested, even though he had nothing to do uh, with the whole thing. He had to be um, taken to spend six months and eight days of his life um, in a cell at Kober prison. Um, without, uh, held without a trial. Um, so uh, as he was in prison, he, he couldn't have pen and papers, uh, but he managed to source some kind of uh, materials to start uh, as what he has called the nucleus of the, or the ideas of drawings uh, while he was um, in confinement and in uh, imprisonment. So these drawings that we, um, were sometimes, um, this is the part that I was really interested about because um, I read all of these interviews and I heard him talk about it, but in some cases he would say that his family actually just smuggled some paper for him in prison. Uh, and then he would actually say that he had to just use the cement castings um, until he would get out of jail. Because if he had been caught with any sort of like pen and paper, he would be sent to solitary imprisonment. Um, 
And for that reason, he just continued to go on um, with the ideas themselves. But um, I want to share some part of the interview uh, that I'm telling you about. They put me in jail for six months and eight days without any trial. I used to draw very, very small drawings on paper, paper which was just cement casings, where they found that you had paper and pencil. They put in solitary confinement for two weeks. I used to to bury them in the sand because they didn't want them to to be discovered. They didn't want to be put in solitary confinement. I used to draw, just to draw the nucleus of an idea and then to put another piece with it and let it grow. It grows like a creeper. Let me say that it was for me a blessing in disguise because I learned in it how to make a picture from the organic growth of a picture. And these little drawings from... So this was uh, from an interview uh, for the BBC uh, made by the curator Hans Ulrich. Obvious. and he spoke about this growth of a picture uh, and the process of learning how to actually formulate an image out of nothingness. And what was interesting about these uh, prison drawings was how they ranged from like brief stream of consciousness uh, to prose um, and poetry and to actually drawing um, self-portraits, drawing some mythical creatures. And sometimes, um, as you can see here, it's the actual uh, prison that, it was for me the first time that I actually had seen this uh, uh, prison in a drawing form or any sort of plan for the prison itself. And for us, the history of prisoners uh, in Sudan is a a long, a a long kind of um, tale. And we have so many diaries and uh, writings about the the experience of being imprisoned in these jails and under these uh, regimes. But what was interesting is that it was the first kind of visual uh, peek into what it means to be um, in prison there. And as I said, it ranges from um, prose to poetry and Quranic verses. And sometimes it would take the shape of some sort of metamorphosis and um, a type that uh, he would go into hallucinations maybe, or just dream up another world where he would actually become some sort of uh, different creatures. And uh, what I want to add on about this book is that what's special about it is that um, Asalahi's uh, Salahi's work in paintings has been uh, just a digital experience for many of us um, growing up in Sudan and to actually have this experience of being uh, of it being in physicality uh, in scapulated in a book form has meant a lot to me and um, yeah I have a lot of links for you to check out on books uh, if you're interested let me know actually I could talk about this forever so thank you very much <laughs> <laughs>